What's up? It's Christine Horn, and you are watching Actors Daily Bread. This is where I teach you how to crush your auditions, book more work, and live a life that you love. This is episode 171. Happy Friday. Today I'm talking about getting it done versus getting it done well. So I am live on Instagram. Hey, Instagram, I'm live on Facebook. If you miss any part of this, don't worry. It's going to replay. So all my replay watchers who will watch this later, what's up? Replay watchers? Love you guys. Again, I'm Christine Horn, and I'm a working professional actress of 20 plus years. God, that's a long time. And I'm a life and career coach for actors just like you. So if you're, if you're an actor who needs inspiration, if you're an actor who really wants to work in film and TV, if you're an actor who's on Broadway and looking to make your transition to film and TV, or if you're just an actor who just likes talking to other actors, you're in the right place. So welcome. Happy Friday. Hey, Monique. Hey, Don Axum. Hey, Sheena. Hey, Trafina. It's Friday. I took the day off yesterday. A um, couple of reasons. One, um, I wanted to honor my husband, Garland. Yesterday was his birthday, so I did not do any work besides trying to fix retro, uh, retrograde issues with my website. Thank you all for the support of my new book that launched yesterday, Playing Small, The Actor's Guide to Becoming a Booking Magnet. It is available on Amazon, so order your copy, please. And if you have already ordered, thank you in advance, but please go back and leave a review. I'll remind you later, but that will mean the world to me. So thank you so much. So we just took a beach day yesterday and just sat in that and had quality time. And um, I saw all of your comments and your reposts and I'm so grateful and I was so excited and stoked, stoked, stoked. Hi, Sheena. Um, but today we're continuing on, you know, so I'm looking at my calendar. You guys know, or if you don't, I am teaching a full day in Atlanta, Georgia on August 24th at the Bronze Lens Film Festival for their 10 year anniversary. I'm so excited to get my hands on every actor who shows up and we're gonna do some good, good, good work. Even if you came to my event last year, this will be, we're gonna go deeper and really do some more, um, some more hands on work, more than we did last year. Um, and the link for that Instagram is in my bio, Facebook is above or below. Um, so we're counting down so I guess we have 21, 21 more days before the event. So there's this whole level up to stardom theme, because that's the name of the event, level up to stardom. So I'm like, let's show up every day. Again, I took yesterday off because of my husband's birthday, but I am back. And today I want to talk about getting it done versus getting it done well. So as you pop on, be sure to say hi, say hello, wave, so I know you're here. Even if you're watching the replay, say hi. So here's what I want to talk about today. So I hear this often, I hear this often from many clients. And um, before I get into that, I'm gonna get into the word today, tonight, on this here Friday night. But listen, I wanna, spend a, I wanna send a special love shout. You know, I have the honor of doing these videos, I have the honor of coaching you guys virtually, I have the honor of my Booking Magnet Academy members, and my inner circle members. There's so many of you I have never actually touched, but I feel like we touch each other through these, through the phone and the computer. And so I know I get to just, I get attached to some of your stories. I get attached to some of your triumphs, some of your trials. And so I'm going to spend a special love shout to Nagi Sammy. Keep going, brother. A special love shout to Jasmine Shanice. Keep going, sister. A special love shout to Farrah Lopez. Keep going, keep going, keep going. A special love shout to um, Gloria John. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Um, and you know why I'm sending you this energy. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, okay? Um, I hear your stories. I see your comments. I feel you, okay? Um, so, Getting it done versus getting it done well. So here's what I hear a lot of from my clients. So let, can I be real with y'all? So if you've, you, if you've never coached me, you don't know this. And anybody who's coaching me, please make a comment so people know I'm, I'm telling all truths. I'm very direct. I'm very blunt. And I am... If you tape anything for me, so I like to give my clients self-tape assignments, or sometimes some of my clients will say, my private clients will say, Christine, can you look at this audition that I did and give me feedback? I judge down to the lipstick you have on. Why did you curl your hair that way? Why did you walk in? Why did you do this? Why you look sleepy? What, that's not the right outfit. Like I do that. 
Why? Because no one used to do that for me. You just don't book something and you never know why you never get feedback. Right. And so am I lying? Any of my clients, I need y'all to post in the comments. Um, real hashtag, real talk. If I give you, if I've given you real talk in your feedback. Right. And so sometimes what comes up for people when I feel like what they've submitted to me is subpar to be clear or not to their fullest potential. I say, well, you know, why did you do this or this or this or this? Or this seems weird. What did the breakdown say? Like, why did you do that? And they're like, oh, I hear excuse, excuse, excuse. And I'm not saying that the what you're telling me is not important in life. To be clear, what I'm telling you is what you're telling me is not important to the casting director. Nobody cares. Nobody cares that you got eight children. Nobody cares that you had to work a double shift. Nobody cares that you had to come home and cook. Nobody cares that you didn't have a reader. Nobody cares that your printer ran out of ink. Nobody cares that you sat in traffic. Nobody cares that you got in a car accident. Nobody cares that your wig, you lost your wig. Like nobody cares about none of that. Now people, no one's just gonna be that that frank with you, I'm here to tell you, nobody cares. Casting has a job to do. They have a job to fill point blank period. And they're not gonna send no tape forward that looks a hot mess, period. So when clients tell me, Christine, but you don't understand. <laughs> I'm do my Kevin Hart voice. No, 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 no. Right? They're like, Christine, you don't understand. Like, I had such a busy day. Christine, my kids. Christine, oh, I had to work a double shift. Listen, when I had my nine to five and my five to ten, I just prepped myself. I'm not getting no sleep tonight. If I choose to take this audition tonight, I'm going to be tired tomorrow. Cool, but I know that I'm an actor. I know that I want, what's more important, this day job that I don't feel like going to anyway, or this gig that could potentially take me to my next level in my career? Y'all clearly see what choices I have made. So I would suck up that sleepiness because I know at the end of the day, no one cares. And here's real talk, no one's gonna tell you. If you don't do it, someone else is gonna do it. But here's the issue. Some of you have the mentality, I just need to get it done. And I'm here to tell you, cut that. Oh God, I'm so my mentor. I'm so Freddie Hendricks right now. <laughs> Anybody who knows Freddie and YA, you know what I just did. I don't have to tell you. No one cares. Because here's the deal. While you trying to just get it done, Brandon, uh, Lenore, freaking Jasmine, freaking Brian, freaking Sheena is getting it done well. They're taking the time to beat that face. Ladies, stop asking me, do I need to put makeup on every time? If the character needs makeup, yes. I don't care if it's 2 a.m., beat your face. Y'all want me to co-sign on half-ass and I cannot. And I'm the one who's going to tell you directly, no one cares. That is not me being insensitive to you as a human being. I got my own ish too. But if Chase Paris sends me an audition that's due in the morning at 8 a.m. Eastern, and I don't care if I've had five auditions or if I just got off set or if I just got off work, if I want that gig and I know I'm competing with everyone else in the world, L.A., Canada, New York, London, I'm going to show up fully. So that is what separates you, amateur, from you, professional, period. If you can't say amen, you just might say ouch. Shout out to Allison Bird, one of my old business coaches. She used to say that. Christine, if you can't say amen, you just might say ouch. Well, you need to say ouch. Hashtag ouch or hashtag amen if it relates to you in the comments. And it's okay if it's ouch. Because now, Monique says you're speaking to me. Good. Because now, let's admit that it's an ouch. Admit, ah, Christine, you, uh, you, oh, you got me. Sometimes I just be just trying to get the deadline. Some of y'all just trying to get the deadline, but here's what you need to do. Can we walk away with a big aha tonight? Thank you. I see y'all. I see you, Facebook. I see you, Gail. I see you, Brian. I see you, Rosa. Hey, Rosa. Right? Here's the deal. And I had a conversation with Tara Felstein. Tara, if you don't know Tara Felstein, Felstein Paris casting in Atlanta. I'm going to not even say Atlanta. The Southeast. They fucking rock. Excuse my language. <laughs> it's Friday. Um, 
one time when I was working on Good Girls, th those of you who've seen me on Good Girls, we were at the table read. And I just, it was at the end of the day and I was like, gave her a hug. I was like, hey. And I was like, I want to ask you a question for my students. And, and my students already know this story. But I said, listen, what happens if you get an audition, you know, and you don't have a reader, you're out of town, or even you just at home, but don't have a reader. And, you know, you try to do the whole cell phone thing or, you know, get someone to call in through the speaker thing. Y'all know what I'm talking about. She said, Christine, tell them to just decline. I said, really? Hey, Don. She said, just tell them to decline. And here's why. Because if you send me a BS tape, Shafina says, ouch. <laughs> she said, amen and ouch. <laughs> We've all been guilty of it, right? But she said, if you send us a half-ass tape, and she didn't say half-ass. This is my impression. This is what I took from her. Basically, they're not going to present you to producers or to network because you do realize just because you send it, some of y'all realize y'all think, oh, I just send this little self tape to casting, and then it's just me and casting having our own moment. You're not seeing the very big picture. You're not seeing it go. You see it go to casting. That's when you stop here. It goes to casting, then it goes to producers, and then the producers and directors sign off, and then it goes to the studio exec. So when y'all get pinned or put on hold, and they're like, "We're holding you for network approval," that's this person. So your tape needs to be so good that the head of CBS, NBC, USA, TNT is like, "Bet this is the one." But some of y'all are just getting it done. Bad lighting, bad sound, reader through the phone, your own voice, you're trying to make your own voice sound different through the, through the iMovie. I did that. I used to do that. And I didn't book those jobs. Some of y'all are doing that and wondering, man, what's wrong with my tapes? How come? I just had to get it done because I had to be up at 4 a.m. So I would rather you decline the audition. Hear me. Today is Friday, August 2nd. 2019, and you can quote me on this. Decline rather than sending a bad tape. Decline the in-person audition rather than showing up unprepared, looking like an amateur, because that is gonna be the, the memory that will be um, freaking stained in their brain. They're not gonna care that you had a car accident and couldn't get a babysitter. We can come up with excuses all day. Y'all know the quote I love to share with you from financial coach David Nagel. When you make an excuse, any excuse will do. I'll say it again for the, for the back row. When you make an excuse, any excuse will do. So come on, just bring me excuses. I, I just don't care. So if you ever work with me, I'm opening the doors to my inner circle very soon. Sheena, you know I'm telling the truth. You're my inner circle. Dawn Bino, you know you're my inner circle. Farrah Lopez, inner circle member. You know I don't care. And I have to do, treat you that way, and I have to judge your tapes that way so that you know that's how the industry is going to look at them. I remember the story I've shared with some of you in the past. You know, I sh when I was working my 9 to 5, that I proudly held at a nonprofit. I talk about that nonprofit in my book, Playing Small Out Now on Amazon. So if those of you who have the book, you see I talk about the job I had, the nonprofit that I worked at for many, many years. There was never a confusion about where my loyalties lied. Laid, lie, lay. Uh, Y'all, my English majors, majors can tell me what's correct. There was never a choice, never a question. And many of you know the story. I auditioned for The Lion King at an open call. It was an open call for Aida and Lion King, same day over at uh, the Clark Atlanta University campus in Atlanta. I, I had multiple callbacks for Aida, ended up turning down the um, standby position they offered at the time, but I never heard anything from the Lion King. Three years, tres años ayer, right? Three years later, they call me out the blue. I'm at the front desk like, Bobby, that institute may help you, the receptionist. And they're like, can you come here? Can you come to New York for a callback? I'm like, what? I could have easily been like, my friend is calling me, decline. <laughs> hey, Kale, I'm on, I'm on live. Uh, I could have easily been like, but I got a job and I can't, and I got to get the money and they don't care. They got a position to fill. So I got my coins together. I think I did a, this was a crowdfund without, before uh, GoFundMe and before Kickstarter. It was like, uh, cousin, 
hey, you got $50? Hey, friend. Hey, friend, you got $20? I'm trying to get to New York. Jasmine Shanice, you know this. You did this to get to Los Angeles. She was like, if I got this many friends. If each of y'all give me a dollar, I can get to Los Angeles for this big audition. And did you not? Look at how God works. You got to LA. I donated. I put my dollar in the pot. The point is, if I didn't go, I know someone else would go. If I didn't show up, someone else is going to show up. And y'all know the story too. I didn't book that, that, that's at that callback. But a month later, they called me again out the blue. I'm still at the front desk. Hello, Bobby, that institute, may I help you? Those of y'all who work with me at that nonprofit, y'all know I ain't lying. A month later, they said, can you be here next week on tour? You got the job. I was like, uh, today is my last day. Uh, it's been great, <laughs> but I got to go. <laughs> because if I had been like, well, I got to give notice and honey, please. I threw my stuff. I just left. I left. I packed bags and left. Everybody at the job was not shocked. Why? Because the foundation had already been laid that I'm an actor. See, some of y'all are working jobs and thinking, oh, what was me? I worked this job. Am I really an actor? If you believe that you are, you are. Just because you work at UPS or the church doesn't take away who you are or what you really do. We all got to do jobs sometimes that doesn't make it, that doesn't make it our identity. Does the Kroger does the person working at the Kroger or the Ralph's doing cashier think I'm a cashier? I'm a cashier for life. No, that's your, that's the job you do. That's the check you take home. But what do you do? Who are you? That doesn't have to define you. You get to decide what that is. So I was deuces quickly because I was willing to go and go hard and show up fully. And I know I went around the world to tell you this lesson, but if you don't take nothing else from the stuff that I'm giving you guys, please take this. Getting it done is not good enough. There's so many laugh emojis happening in this thread. I can't even. <laughs> I'm telling you real life stories. I swear to you. I mean, these are just, this is just my real life. I know some of you are new to me, and so you're thinking, oh, Christine's there. She's been on all these shows. She don't get it. Oh, no, boo, I get it. This is why I show up to tell you this, because no one else is going to be this real with you and tell you, boo, that tape was horrible. You shouldn't have even submitted it. Just decline. Wait till you can have time to absorb, create the character, show up fully, have the hair right. Summer, okay, let me just address this. This is like a sidebar. This is for my black women. I know it's the summertime. I know you have braids. I know you got braids. I know you have summertime hairstyles. You may miss out on some opportunities because of that, period. I can't co-sign on your braids or your faux locks or anything. If that's what you have, that's what you're choosing to have right now. If you don't have a wig that can cover it securely, just accept I'm just going to be skipping some roles right now. Unless that is in line with my essence and my brand, I understand that I'm going to miss out on some work, period. I'm choosing my hairstyle over my work. Can we now move on? I just, I'm sorry, I, I'm not sorry, actually. Honest. Nobody cares that it's your, it's, you had to go swimming. Nobody cares that you went on a vacation. Fine, understand that Bonquisha number five is getting that job with the braids. That is the offer to her. Hollywood don't understand about your box braids, your faux locks, why your head is shaved on the side. Unless you have an alternative that you can keep showing up as the brand that you are offering me, what is it that you're selling on a daily basis? On a daily basis, I sell something very specific. When you make the decision to do something for yourself, and please don't misunderstand, I'm not telling you don't get braids, don't get faux locks, don't shave your hair, don't dye your hair yellow. I'm not telling you that. Do you, because it's in, you should not feel like a slave to the industry. I'm saying, understand that you either need to A, have a, a plan B, i.e. a wig, so that you can do whatever you feel like. If Sheena decides she wanna shave her head or dye it yellow, God bless, God speed, you do that boo. But understand, she better have that wig to uh, look like her headshot as much as possible or to reflect the characters that are gonna come through via her agent or herself. 
But if she's like, bump that, I'm showing up to these auditions with this yellow hair, with these faux locks, with these thick uh, box braids, and they gonna have to take it. Okay. Understand how Hollywood sees that and what box you put yourself in with that. And don't ask for anybody to think any differently. That's just what it is. Do your own research. What movies do you see women with big old box braids? What TV shows and what characters are they playing? Now, don't, mis don't misunderstand the character that is a series regular that's been on the show for many years and she's changing her hair as she feels like it. I'm talking about co-star, guest star. If your headshot's giving sleek, banker, fierce, and then you show up with some dookie braids, well, you're not going to book that job. Rosa says, totally makes sense. <laughs> Jasmine says, truth, it's unfortunate, but true. Her locks gone. Jasmine just, my, my client Jasmine, just cut her hair. Had beautiful locks, just cut her hair. Nobody told her to do that. She made a decision. What is she, what was she more attached to? And again, y'all know I'm the queen of change. You know, listen, let me tell y'all, I keep my wig packs right next to me. So I'll be like, what wig was this? Oh, this wig booked me three times. Reorder. That's, it's sitting right here for this very reason. Can I keep it any more real with you right now? It's, I'm like, and I got this in Atlanta, that good old $32.99 price. That's Tanache, for those of you wondering. Tanache. <laughs> you know your coach is black when? I know... <laughs> Listen, hey, if y'all, this is real. This I have a real favor. If y'all have, if there's another coach out there, like who keeps it this real, please send me the link because I really want to watch. I need a mentor too. I got business coaches, but I don't have a good act. I don't have a pro. I don't have that good good acting coach that's gonna keep it this real with me. Let me come to these comments. I know I said all this again. If you're just joining, this is I'm gonna come to these comments on Facebook and Instagram tickling myself. Happy Friday, y'all. God is good all the time. You are here. You are breathing. You're watching this live stream. We are sharing space and time together. And I'm so grateful for you. God, like you have the courage to get up another day to show up, not just for this life, but for your career and for your passion and your dreams. There are so many people who are going to bed every night, like living in regret. And so I just thank God for this moment right here, right now. Um, Let's come to these faces. Let's, I'm gonna go to the, let me go to uh, Instagram. Hold on. Uh, there's so it's been going up. There's outside of all the laugh emojis. I love you guys. Thank you for being here. <laughs> Brandon, the prophetess has spoken. I love it. Um, just scrolling up. Bear with me, Facebook. Um, uh oh. Oh no 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 no. I don't want to type a comment. I'm trying to scroll. Um. Brandon says he's going to do that same shuffle gig when he manifests his regional theater gig. You speaking that into existence, bring it. Y'all heard her heard here first. Um, Monique says, thank you. My pleasure. Um, Jada, any advice on stage names? Mine isn't unique. What is your, what is your stage name? Put it in the comments. Um, I tape LA. Hey, Crystal, on a show now that is serious about me wearing my, wearing my coupons. Clippings? You mean clippings? Until now... Season three, they've approved my short hair. I think she meant clip-ins. I think it's an auto-correct. Um, because, you know, that's interesting. So this is an actress um, who's on a show. She's been recurring, and she's been wearing clip-ins. Prior to that, she's saying they didn't mind her short hair. But see, people get attached to a look. And you, because you see yourself all the time, and this is for my men, too. When, shout out to my twin, Cornelius Jones, you know, who... Um, when he's, he tells me like how much his gigs change when he has a goatee versus not when he's clean shaven, like just the types of roles he's called him for and how often like his bookings change. So you don't under, as you see yourself every day, your friends see you every day, but don't underestimate how one tiny thing you do to your hair or your facial hair can change how people, how people see you. Um, <laughs> Um, clippings, yes. I knew what you meant, uh, Crystal. Hey, Crystal. Yes, yes, yes. If you need some taping services, uh, I Tape LA. Follow I Tape LA on Instagram. They're amazing. Um, and she's a friend of mine. Hey, Crystal. I'm going to come over here to Facebook. I see you guys. Let me just do a scroll down. 
Um, again, if you're just joining, you can watch the replay. Listen, I'm doing all this and more August 24th, Bronze Lens Film Festival, Atlanta, Georgia. Take a bus, drive, take a long Uber, <laughs> take a plane, and join me August 24th. The link is in my uh, Instagram, is in my bio, Facebook, above or below. I would love to see you there. Whoever shows up, I don't care if it's five of us, honey, we're going to have the best 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. ever because I had an amazing event last year. We did shout out to all of you who came last year to Hollywood Bound Actors Live. That was my first event. I got to see you, I got to feel you, and I got to learn what needed, I needed more time on, where we could have expanded, how we could have gone deeper, and I'm taking all those notes in for this year. So I'm really excited. Um, I'm over here on uh, um, Facebook. Um, Y'all are just cutting up in the comments. I love it. <laughs> Kushada, hey Kushada, she asked, does that apply to kids as well? I'm gonna come back to that. Uh, Gail, Gail Everett, can I just say something right now? I mean, I'm gonna say it anyway. <laughs> Hi, dude or Duke, whoever you are, I don't, you know, your names. Um, oh, thank you again. Thank you to everyone who's ordered my book. Let's help break the internet. And when you order it and you get a chance to read it, please leave a review because that helps my ranking, you know? Um, I'm really excited about it, though. I'm really proud of it. And thank you, thank you, thank you. I know some of you are get, gonna get it soon. It's not going nowhere. Um, but this first initial month push is very impactful for me. So I appreciate you in advance. I want to give a special shout out to all my seasoned actresses I have. And you know, I'm gonna say seasoned, not in experience, but more so in age. I have a nice audience, a nice chunk of audience who's over like 55, and I love it. I love, love, love seeing my what you know the industry calls our seniors which you know you're so vivacious and everything my god 55 ain't nothing 55 and up but i just love that like y'all ain't nothing to stop you because i'm always like somebody gotta be the grandma somebody gotta be the auntie somebody gotta be the grandpapa so i'm so grateful i just want to send that love to some of my uh some of my older seasoned crew because you're showing us that it's never too late to go for your dreams. So that's special love for Gail, special love for Denise, uh, Gwen. Like I got just uh, just a whole crew of people. Um, um, let's see. Trafina says, I'm the realist out here. Kushad, I want to come back to you. So this is, um, is that a workshop doing out here in it? Dude or Duke on Instagram, I think you're asking me, I'm, I'm not sure of your question. Is it a workshop doing out here in Atlanta? Can you expound? Can you just retype the question for me so I, make, I can make sure I answer correctly? Um, I want to speak to my parents of kids. And again, I'm not going off the rails. I swear I'm, on, I'm in line. This whole episode tonight is all about getting it done versus getting it done well. And oh God, let me, let me speak to my parents because this is the deal. If you came on late, I was talking about if you're tired, you got kids, you got to cook dinner, you've been working all day, sometimes you may submit a subpar tape. But I didn't even think about it till just now. So thank you, Kushada, for the parents, my parents of actors, my children actors, and it's up to you to tape them. It's up to you to prep them, get the clothes, get the hair done, right? Make sure they stop playing with them toys and focus, but they also got to do their homework. And what can happen is a couple of things, and I've seen this come through my inbox. I'm not going to say no names, but sometimes um, your fear, your exhaustion slips into the mind of the child and whereas the child is just looking to have fun, they're like, oh, another audition. Oh, I got to be sad. I got to be mad. Okay. And they're like, okay, I got the lines. I'm going to do it. Whatever you got going on has now transferred to them. And it's at that moment, I would also say, be strategic in how your night is planned. Um, Dude or do, click the link in my bio on Instagram. I'm teaching at the Bronze Lens Film Festival. It's a, it's a huge film festival. It's their 10 year anniversary. And I'm teaching August 24th all day. So click the link, you'll see where it says Bronze Lens, okay? Thank you, Dawn. Um, so I think we, we and, I've ta and I've talked closely to some of my parents who are in my, my Booking Magnet Academy who are there for their students. You know, you guys, I don't coach kids directly. I love kids, but I just, that's not, everybody ain't able. And I'm not able. I love kids. I'm just not, it's not my sweet spot. It's not my zone of genius. But I can coach parents on how to coach their kids. And 
if you've had a long day and you're going through all that or you see, oh, like my kid got this audition, but so did like seven, seven other girls or seven other boys from the same agency. Like, and you start thinking, oh, my kid's not going to get this. This is the conversation so fierce. Like that stuff that you have coming up, your insecurity, your, your, your fear, your anxiety starts to spill over to the kid because it's all energetic. But when it comes, and I know I'm not just talking about hair, but I just want to speak to that because there's not enough, I give so much honor and respect to parents who are on this journey with their kids, trying to help them with these auditions. I see it out here in LA. These parents are driving their kids to commercial auditions, which are all too often. They're having a tape. They're now becoming acting coaches. They're feeling that pressure. And it's a lot. And I, I want to just make sure, hey, parent, you're taken care of. Like, how, how, do, how are you releasing? How are you dealing with the rejection? Because this isn't even your path. And so God, actors are at least we get used to it. We just have tough skin. Even when we don't have tough skin, we like, we learn to get tough skin. It's like playing the djembe drum. You just gonna get them calluses. It's gonna hurt in the beginning playing the guitar. It's gonna hurt. But then you eventually just get a callus and you just get used to it. So when you're, that's not you, it is very hard to do that separation. But I would dare say, just really always stay tapped into what the, the fun that the kid is having in this, in playing pretend, and then getting to be paid for to see themselves on television. But it doesn't change this, the situation we started with, with the quality of the audition and how you show up. It's the same thing, understanding, if, if I'm talking to my little black girls, if you got little cornrows in your um, little your girl's hair, depending on the project, is going to speak totally different. If it fits the project, if the tone of the show is gritty and urban, using Hollywood words, right, then fine. But if that's not the tone of the show and you, she shows up with that versus her hair with twist outs or Afro puff that's just young and fun versus, you know, crochet braids, like understand everything means something. And I want all of us to start looking at hairstyles and looking at how we show up through a different lens not the lens of our community. I hope that makes sense. And this is for all of us. Again, I, there's no passes given tonight. There's no passes given ever. You are allowed to do whatever that you want. Rock, yes, Roxanne. <laughs> she said, oh yeah, age ain't nothing but a number. Shout out to Roxanne who recurs on Greenleaf. Yes, I'm gonna see you August 24th. I'm excited. Right? So this is, again, the stuff no one's going to tell you. Like, do whatever you feel like doing. Just understand that it will impact your work sometimes. I hope I'm very clear on my angle. Do you, boo? Understand it comes at a, at a cost. Are we clear? <laughs> Live your life. I'm the first one to tell you. This career is not going nowhere. Have your kids, get married, travel. Don't be afraid to take vacations because something might pop up. Please take a vacation so something can pop up because that's Actors Murphy's Law. Just pack your travel situation like we talked about last week. You got, you know, so I, I feel like I'm beating a dead horse, but I want to just make sure I get to the end, for those of you who came late, the end point. Don't just get these auditions done. Because while you're just getting it done, me, my girl Crystal Lee Brown, who's going to be in the new Mindhunter coming on Netflix, right? Roxanne, Gwen, Sheena, we're going to be getting it done well. We're going to stay up late. We're going to put makeup on. Let me talk to the ladies real quick about this makeup. I used to say this too. Oh, I got to put on makeup. It's midnight. Oh my God. I got to be working in the morning. Guess what? I would tell myself this. This is how I would coach myself. I'd be like, it's cheaper than getting on a plane. You may have to take 15 minutes, yes, to beat your face. And listen, I have my beat down to like six minutes. But it may take you 15 minutes to beat your face, but that's quicker than having to drive to an in-person audition. It's quicker than having to fly to Atlanta or fly to LA or fly to New York. <laughs> quicker and cheaper. So just adjust your whole your whole paradigm around it. Because understand, the energy you start putting out, even my men, oh, I gotta cut my hair, I gotta shave my five o'clock shadow. Yes, boo. But think about the energy you're putting out with that. Oh, I gotta, oh, I gotta put on makeup. Oh, you're already telling the universe you don't want it. Where's the gratitude? 
Where's the gratitude? I got an audition. Oh, it's 12 o'clock. I'm going to beat this face because this character, oh, this character needs lashes. She's a little extra fancy. Oh, no, this character, he got to be clean cut because I got to put my, my suit on with this. I'm going to kill him. I don't care if it's 1 a.m. Do it. That's the difference. Christine, how do you be booking so much? I can't be any more transparent with you guys. Between these videos, this whole book, uh, my academy, like, I, I don't know what else. I'm just going to, I'm telling you everything. But if you come back to me and ask me a question to, to hope that I co-sign on anything that is not a, a standard of excellence, I'm not going to do it. Your accountability buddies shouldn't do it. No one should do it for you. You know, we all know when we like kind of half in it. Admit that, sit in that, be like, mm. I've, I've turned down many auditions recently, in the past six months, where I just didn't have the capacity for it. My plate was so full with other stuff, and I knew I couldn't fully represent the Christine Horn brand the way it needed to be represented. And I knew I had already set an expectation of what to expect from me. So the same thing goes for you. Why would you, if you, there's a casting office or offices that you have take that, that, that you have taken the time to set relationships, get pinned for, book jobs for, why would you then send something horrible? I never want people to, I, we don't go backwards, guys. We keep going forward. The auditions only get better. Um, hey, Jada, you never told me what that stage name was, or maybe you didn't, I lost it in the comments. I like Jada Michelle, that's your real name. Um, you say, how do you keep your nails? I don't always keep my nails. This is <laughs> such a late, a girl question, sorry guys. Sheena says, thank you for the shift in perspective. Jasmine says she needed that. My pleasure, that's why we're here. Rosa said, her wig collection is crazy. <laughs> Brian Howard, shout out to Brian, my booking magnet. He says they love his fade for the military look. And see, you know that. So of course, if, if you get another military audition, of course, you've been in the military, right? You army guy, right? Are you army or air force? I can't remember. But you know that. So why would you show up anything different? You know that books you because you know firsthand actually that that works, that's real. Um, I'm gonna come to your question, Trafina, about hair, but let me come to Melanie says she loves my transparency. Absolutely. Y'all ain't got nothing to hide. I'm so grateful to be talking to all of you. I pray that anything I share with you, you can take and use it for your next booking. And then you'll send me a message on Facebook and Instagram and tell me, and then I'll have a, a praise moment and tear up. I love it. God is able. God is great. Um, okay, Jada, about the nails. Let's talk about nails real quick. I know we're so off topic, I guess. But it's Friday. It's Friday. You ain't got no job. I'm not going to say the last part. I said it anyway, silently. Um, nails. So here's the deal. Y'all know, okay, for ladies, if you, especially if you haven't booked anything recently, especially haven't booked something on network television, you show up day of, um, sometimes after you're fitting, they say, oh, let's take you to hair and makeup. Hair looks at you and they're like, okay, you're great. You know, usually with me, I got a wig on. They're like, oh, you're great. I don't have to do anything. I'm off, the, I'm off the clock, right? And then makeup is like, oh, your skin is great, Christine. Oh, can I see your hands? Because hair is, con hair is connect. I mean, makeup is connected to your hands. That used to confuse me. Because I would go to my fitting and be like, oh, my, my nail polish is pink. And I got these acrylics on. Oh, we got pink clothes. I would be cute. I got my pink and my pink. And then I would get to makeup. And they look, can I see your hands? That's, they always want to see your hands, male or female, to see if you got any scars they need to cover up and see if your nails are doing something crazy. And many times they'd be like, oh, that nail polish is not going to work. That just happened to me a few weeks ago. I just thought this nail polish was banging because I saw the clothes. And they're like, oh, we need to change that polish. And I was like, uh, this is gel. I just got it done. <laughs> not cheap. And like, uh, you're at work, so we need to tape over it. We need to paint over it. But here's the risk I take with acrylics. So I go back and forth with acrylic nails. Depends on the job. 
if I, like, like Brian Howard was saying, he does a lot of military stuff. As you guys know, I do a lot of authoritative military FBI kind of things. I will self tape with my nails and just try to hide them out of frame. But I know when I book it, these got to come off. I got to go, even, I don't care if I just got a filling, I got to go to the shop and get them off. I got to get them off or I got to get them so cut down that I might as well take them off. That's the reality. And if I show up with a color that makeup doesn't like or deem appropriate, they usually take a picture, take it, send it to the director, director makes a decision. Makeup always has some other colors and they'll paint over whatever you got. Nobody cares if you spend $60 on a gel fill-in. So I go through phases though. I go through phases when I don't want any nails. Usually Hollywood, unless, oh God, I just gotta keep it so real. Usually Hollywood, look at the women in Hollywood who work. They have their own natural nail. It's just their natural nail. They do a nice manicure, maybe a really light pink nude color. That's normal. This is like the black girl we want to have. We want to have our, our tips on. We want to be acrylic. And sometimes I'm just in that moment. And I just need to have this going on. I take that risk. And I'm ready to take them off at any given second. Because I'm not being a slave to the industry. If I feel like doing this and turn it up, turn that music up. You know, you can't just touch nothing. Your nail be too long. You be like, turn it up. Shout out to Saycon. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I just know I need to change, change it. Okay, I hope that answers your question. Oh, God. Okay. Because the acrylics don't go with every roll. If it's the end of the world, why you got fresh acrylics with a, with a, with a coffin-style shape? That don't go. That don't go with the end of the world. Who, who doing your feeling end of the world, Walking Dead? Ain't no feelings in the Walking Dead. Don't show up to no callback like this with these orange, ti orange tips. <laughs> But but nobody cares. That's how we started today. Nobody cares. You can keep them tips that you just paid for, or you can book that gig. Courtney, Courtney said, why am I? I'm cracking up. Yeah. What you mean? Shamika says, what about makeup when auditioning? What do you mean? Expound on that question for me. And I'm going to come to, I'll come back to you. I'm going to come to Facebook. Trafina had a question. Y'all cracking up in the comments. Thank you. Hey, listen, if you like this video, um, just keep watching, turning your notifications so you don't miss it. Trafina, shout out to Trafina Way, one of my Booking Magnet Academy members. She said, so question, my hair is the same in all my headshots and show up the same as always, but I do want to grab a couple of wigs for options. Where do you get your wigs? Trafina, you live in New York City, is endless wig shops. Don't go in Manhattan, go in like, you know, Harlem or Brooklyn the Bronx, like just the regular, the one that say beauty supply, like not Sally beauty supply. Just go to the black girl hair stores. And literally for you, I know your story. You're not crazy about wigs. They look weird. Bring a friend. Do not go alone. I would suggest bring a friend who wears wigs because when we don't, if it's not something we normally do, they're all going to look weird to us because a friend who wears wigs can say, yeah, this wig may be like this, but we might be able to thin this out a little bit, get it styled so it fits your face more. You don't always have to wear wigs straight out the box as they are. So that would be my advice. Go to a black girl wig shop, bring a friend who wears wigs, just try some on. And they're going to be like, you can only try on five. And that's fine. Buy the little dollar wig cap, try on five and go to another wig shop. Because they'd be funny if you don't buy nothing. But I don't care. So Trafina, those of y'all who don't know her, she has a short, a t, a t, it's not really like an afro, it's very short cut, which looks very elegant and beautiful on her. But I don't care if even that was my headshot. If I'm auditioning for a character and they get me an audition and I'm supposed to be like this sex pot or like something like, I don't know, that feels extra sultry and sexy and I just feel like long hair would rock for her, I'd show up with a long haired wig. I don't care what my headshot looks like. I know we've been drilled and drilled when we were younger. Look like your headshot. Look like your headshot. No, look like the character. I'm not talking about for commercials, though. I'm talking about for film and TV. Oh, that answers your question. Uh, Gail Everett Smith says, when they keep calling you in for auditions, does that mean they really like, does that mean they like you? Yes, Gail. You know that. Why y'all think casting directors got time to waste? You think people feel like just making you feel good? No. Casting directors have a certain amount of time to fill a certain amount of roles, period. 
They don't have time to make you feel good and stroke your ego. They think you're right for something. People say, I never get feedback. The feedback is, are you getting called back? They like you. They just, it just hasn't worked out yet. That's your feedback. Keep showing up as the best version of you. Doing what I said tonight. Get it done well versus get it done right. I mean, get it done well versus just getting it done. Okay. And here we have more laughter. I know I'm going off, but it's Friday. I have some time. Oh, y'all, natural deodorant is just not, it's healthier, but it is questionable. <laughs> I'm just like, God, why is my pit wet? I've been, the natural deodorant, God. Um, Trifina said I'm off the hook right now. It's Friday, it's Friday. Listen, I released a book. I'm in praise mode. God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. I, 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 I'm here to have fun. Um, okay, I think I got all the Facebook questions. Preguntas, no más preguntas, preguntas on Facebook. Um, Jada says that's what she has, long, long cough and acrylic. Oh, I called you out then, girl. Listen, unless you auditioning for, you know, a very black project where all the girls have the nails, then that's fine. But if you want to work on network television, don't be showing up with them hooks. Nobody wants to see that. Nobody wants to see that. Reality. Okay, so she's expounding on this makeup question. I'm gonna take a couple more questions and I'm gonna go because I don't even know how long this live is. I know I got. I almost got a. You know, it's long when I got a hook up my computer when I started on a hundred. I done lost viewers. People done went away. They're like, I'm talking about too much. Hey, Sean Robin, happy Friday. We've been on here way too long. <laughs> Not too long for me, but I can tell by my viewers y'all have left the building. So I'm gonna take a couple more questions and go. Okay, Shamika, well, it doesn't say Shamika. Whatever your name is, I can't. Shamoy Kangawa. Okay, heavy makeup or light makeup for the camera? Okay, that's a great question and one to end on. Um, understand that when we act, I'm gonna, I'm all, everything that I say is really TV film focused. So know that. We want you to look like a regular person. So never heavy makeup. I remember one of my old managers, shout out to Donise, used to tell me, Christine is an art of looking like you have nothing on. And if you don't know what that means, I need you to practice that. I, there's an art to beating your face, contour, I mean everything, and looking like you did nothing, like you just woke up that way. To looking like you've seen, oh, your hair, is my hair done? Oh, it's like, I just, I just, I just woke up this way. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, you done curled your hair and styled it for three hours and did a shake and go to make it look not so fresh. Same thing with your makeup. You, TV and film is meant for you to look like a regular person. Unless the character is super, in the, if in the breakdown description, they're like gorgeous, drop dead gorgeous, flawless if they start using those adjectives then yes that's when i know i need to throw some lashes on for her i need a extra concealer for her but the approach i have for a, a, a character who's flawless beautiful they using those terms if it's just like mother of three hard you know life has been hard on her your approach to makeup is going to be different there are plenty of roles i never wear makeup for honey i love a good security guard or like a tormented mother or someone super emotional, I don't wear nothing. And when I get to set, guess what? They put Vaseline on my lips talking about, you done. Every role doesn't need makeup. That's you as the actor have to do your job and decide. Everything's about the character. It's not about us, it's about the character. What does this character need? Who is this person? What is their existence? How, how old are they? What's their background? How do they operate in life? Not how, how, how do I operate? How do they? As soon as you take yourself away from it, you can become this other person and every decision you make is based on that person. So I hope that, does that answer your question? And listen, if you're watching me and you're not on my mailing list, you know, I put together a new juicy freebie. Um, I'll put it here in the Facebook comments. Instagram, you can just go to my bio. I just put this together. It's a companion workbook that actually supports my book. I'm going to pin it in the comments. There we go. It's called the Get Booked Playbook. 
get booked, play booked. Oh, great, good, 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 good. Jada, you just bought your bronze lens ticket. I can't wait to meet you. I love it. I can't wait to meet you. I'm so, I can't wait to, I'm a hugger, so come prepared to hug me. Um, so I'm going to go. Has this video been helpful to you? Can I get a word that describes your experience on this live video tonight? And if you're watching a replay, please put a word in the comments for me. Thank you, Sean Robin, for the Get Book Playbook. Yes. I'm actually walking you through all the mental stuff I do before my own auditions. So I talk about it in my book, but then you get a free video series. You don't have to buy the book. I mean, I want you to buy the book, but it stands alone. And I, you get to watch me go through my own process. I think that's priceless. If I do say so myself. All right, Facebook, the six of you left watching live. One word for, for your experience tonight, or, any, or you can share a takeaway. Was there an aha you got? Um, amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I know we went on very, very long tonight. Thank you for those who hung with me. I know some of you had to go and you can come back and watch the replay. Hi, Maggie. Right? You're doing the Lord's work. Absolutely. I'm so grateful. Um, thank you, Jasmine. Kushada says, so helpful. Good. I hope that helps, especially for, you know, my parents out there. I know it's hard. You see that? That's what I'm talking about. That's natural deodorant. Where did you, can someone tell me where I can find the dry, the natural deodorant that keeps you dry? I get that I don't stink, but can I be dry in the process? Please. God. Um, <laughs> sidebar. <laughs> Give me a natural deodorant sponsor, please. Um, Gail Everett Smith says validation. Wonderful. Uh, Sheena says, Sheena Foss is mind blowing. Wonderful. Jocelyn. Hi, Jocelyn Jones. That's a new name. Get Books Playbook. Uh, it's the Get Booked Playbook. And on Facebook, I pinned the comment. So you should see it at the top. Instagram, you can grab it too. Um, it's in my, just click my bio. You'll see the Get Books Playbook in there as well. Um, mm, Nature's Garden. Nature's Garden. Okay, I'll check them out. Something that's gonna keep me dry. Like they'd be like, oh, you don't wanna get a little, have aluminum? Just use this. But they don't tell you, oh, your pit's still gonna get wet. <laughs> wet pits. I don't want wet pits. Um, hi, Sabrina. Hi, Cortland. Always good info. Thank you. My pleasure. Sabrina, I sent you an email tonight. I hope you got it. I sent you an email a couple hours ago. Um, uh, Sheena Foss said, uh, Trafina says confirmation. Jasmine says needed. Um, Gail says, glad to know about the audition. Worried about not booking as often, but they keep calling me in. Yes, when you keep getting called in, you're on the list. You've done your job. None of us book every gig. None of us. But you keep getting called in, they like you. But it's, casting can only do so much, guys. They're not the ones... They're, they're not the ones making the final decision. So, you know, keep your gratitude. Attitude of gratitude. Listen, I know it sounds so cheesy. Oh, mindset, mindset, gratitude, gratitude. When you are grateful, you have so much more to be grateful for. You have so much more to be grateful for. Um, see, Sean Robin, you trying to tell me how to make deodorant. Look, I didn't look at the ingredients. I ain't, I ain't, listen, I'm not going to whip up no deodorant. I'm just already telling you. <laughs> we spend time or money. I'd rather be up here talking to y'all and buy somebody's $5 uh, natural deodorant and call it a day versus me like getting ingredients <laughs> in the kitchen. I got too much to do. Um, but I try to stay as natural as possible. As we wrap, I'm going to take a moment. I'm going to take a deep breath, and you're welcome to take one with me. I know we went long tonight, but I'm so grateful that we could have this time. Sometimes I get so pumped, I forget to take a breath. Sometimes you go to an audition and you forget to breathe and the power that it has in resetting us and making us centered and ready and grounded. 
And so as we end this Friday night, I know some of you have had auditions that didn't turn into bookings. Some of you had zero auditions. Some of you are still on the fence and teetering and just enjoying this like from the outside looking in. So wherever it is that you are, wherever your angle is, just sit in gratitude for being where you are at this time. Be grateful for the people we have on this thread. I know you don't know each other. Some of you do. Some of you are just getting a chance to feel each other through these comments. Like this is, a, this is community. This is necessary because isolation could be a dream killer. You sit in your mind, you sit alone in your mind, in your house, and all these thoughts come up. So just stay in the attitude of gratitude. If you need me, come to YouTube and just binge. Subscribe and binge. <laughs> Seriously. Because sometimes you may not have anyone else to talk to about this stuff. And I know what that's like. I stayed on here long tonight because this is my community. You guys feed me as much as I feed you. And I'm grateful for that. I'm going to wrap have an amazing weekend. I'll be back tomorrow. Tomorrow I'll probably go live during the day because I'm going to hold to my, my promise of going live every day. Again, I took yesterday off in honor of my husband and his birthday. But um, I will be back tomorrow to talk about more goodness. But I want you to know just to keep going if that's what you desire. The moment this no longer feels good the moment you feel like your mental health is compromised, take a pause. There's peace in a pause. So pause when you need to. Step away when you need to. Take a break when you need to. We ain't going nowhere. We here. Look at Gail Everett Smith. Killing it. Letting them silver hairs have it, honey. Have an amazing night. I love you all, those of you who I haven't even touched yet. And I hope to see and meet more of you August 24th at Bronze Lens. Have a good night.